a little more than half an hour west of Schenectady, New York, just off I-88, in the sleepy college town of Cobleskill, New York. Stories of a ghostly woman in period dress haunt a 215-year-old restaurant and former inn. I'm here with Chris Goldner of the Bulls Head Inn. He purchased the property in 2013 and has been restoring it to its original charm ever since. Chris? Hey, Sean? Yeah, I came from uh, Saratoga where I worked as a builder, a consultant, and a restaurateur. I uh, moved down here in 2012 and saw that this place was sitting vacant for about a year and a half following the storms of Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. Uh, so we took the project on to uh, restore it to its former glory, uh, opened it uh, in uh, June of 2015, and we hope that this will be the most exciting chapter of the history of the Bulls Head yet. Where does that history begin? Uh, in the beginning, there were actually three different buildings that sat here uh, that had burned to the ground. Uh, this building, which is now the oldest building in the village of Cobleskill, was built in 1802, and uh, it was built by a gentleman by the name of Seth Wakeman. One of the reasons why Thomas Jefferson was uh, hanging in Foyer. Yes. The place was built in 1802, and he was president at the time. Later on, the Corder family uh, came to Cobleskill, and were, they were owners of this building, and uh, it was affectionately known as the Corder Mansion. And it was probably the most uh, prominent home in the village of Cobleskill uh, at the time of the era when it was built. A story from the customer who was dining in this dining room. He said he was sitting at one table, just kind of observing what was going on. A uh, server had placed a uh, tray with plates right uh, down on a tray stand and um, stepped away for a moment and he said that uh, all of a sudden one end of the tray just lifted up and everything on it just crashed to the floor. Rear of the building. Really? Yeah. That was the front of the building. Um, if you took a look at a grand house, typically you have a glazed window like this directly above the front door. The front door used to be over here. In later years, when the village developed, the uh, front entrance was turned around and put to uh, what you see today, the front. A uh, staircase used to come up from the other direction of that way. And uh, you might even see the old opening in the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah where the stairs continued to the attic. But when they turned everything around, they got rid of that staircase. The staircase over here, where this chair stood, and went up here through the ceiling. And you can see the outline of where that staircase used to go. Supposedly secret meetings were held uh, uh, many, many years ago uh, when the attic area was uh, used by an organization. This was finished probably about 200 years ago. You'll see a plaster arched ceiling. The entire perimeter was finished. There was a bench around the perimeter. You can even see uh, uh, the shadow. It's not painted green along the base. That used to be a bench around the entire perimeter of the room. A ghost hunting team was here uh, doing an investigation and it's going from top to bottom in the building started off in the attic. Uh, while they were up there, they saw an unusual shadow go across the wall in the attic. Um, not quite able to explain where it came from since there wasn't any light coming through the window. Uh, about that time, the door leading up into the attic opened all by itself. Uh, one of the team members immediately came down into the office at the bottom of the stairs to see who was there. There were no people on the second floor. She continued down to the first floor to inquire if anybody was even on the second floor, and nobody was. In latter years, uh, the house uh, was owned by John Stacy and his wife. Um, the story is that um, Mr. Stacy uh, apparently had a drinking problem, and um, his wife uh, was highly against his drinking because she was a member of the WCTU, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, 
and obviously did not uh, allow uh, drinking in the home. After Monty Allen, uh, one of the owners who uh, put this back into a inn and uh, tavern, um, when he applied for a liquor license and was open for business, um, he erected the bar on the first floor and uh, that bar apparently was right where Mrs. Stacy had her bedroom. There's a story from a previous owner and guest where a woman came up stairs to use what uh, then was uh, the ladies' bathroom area. Um, and upon a return to the first floor, remarked to the owner um, how interesting it was that he had people dressed in period dress. And uh, the owner said, well, what are you talking about? He said, well, upstairs in the ladies' restroom area, the, the woman that's, that's uh, in the long gown in the ladies' room. just you here on Monday, but sometimes that's not always the case. Have you ever uh, met this ghost? Well, we are closed on Mondays, and uh, yes, I'm usually here uh, by myself. Uh, save my personal experience in the kitchen uh, in front of three other employees, I haven't seen anything uh, personally in terms of an apparition when I was here by myself. Uh, lots of stories from customers, and employees, past and present. Uh, and one in particular, that of Stuart Burrard, who was uh, an employee back here under past ownership. I had my experience with Miss Stacy Ghost from this inn, probably, and I think it was about 1982. I think it was just the summer after I started that the uh, tavern was built downstairs or underneath the building. Once the tavern was built, uh, it was usually the bartender downstairs that was last to close up the inn. I happened to be in the upstairs, first floor, um, closing up uh, the kitchen area, mopping, and uh, I went out from the kitchen area to the front of the building and entered the foyer. And I had uh, the ghost of Mrs. Stacy pass right in front of me. It was quite exciting. I stopped in my tracks. I, 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 had an, I had an odor in the air, perfumey sort of odor. Something hit me pretty strong. But I just stood there and stared. And then for probably only seconds, I kind of tried to walk around the foyer, looking, recreating, looking to see if something had made the effect of what I saw, and there was, it wasn't as though car lights passing by or anything had caused this. I saw what I saw, it was really interesting. I looked at it as, I felt fortunate, I really felt fortunate that I experienced finally something like this in my life. Thank you, Chris, for showing us around the place. You bet, Sean. You're always welcome for a visit. Stories of the Bull's Head and its hauntings have been told for years, and after checking it out ourselves, they aren't dying anytime soon. Perhaps the inn's historic slogan should be, Good food, sturdy drink, lively spirits. Until next time on Haunted Upstate.